Thanks for watching this screencast. The objective of this screencast is learners will be able to simplify rational expressions by dividing out common factors. So here is the definition of a rational expression. A rational expression is any expression of the form p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomial functions, and q of x does not equal zero. Of course, you couldn't divide uh, you know, anything by zero and get a, a value. So here's a couple of examples of some rational expressions. Uh, 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 all over 5x plus 10. Both of those are polynomial functions. Here's another. Um, 4n minus 6 divided by 3n squared plus 5n. Those are both polynomial uh, expressions top and bottom. And if you want to simplify them, one way to do it is by dividing out any non-zero common factors in both the numerator and denominator. So before we look at some examples of how to actually do this correctly, I want to talk about a common student misunderstanding. Students sometimes misrepresent common factors for common terms. Common factors can be divided out of a rational expression. Common terms cannot. So here's an example of what not to do. If I want to simplify x squared plus 10x plus 16 divided by 2x plus 4, what I cannot do, again repeat, do not do this, is I can't divide these and make it like x squared plus 5 and then say I'll divide the 16 by 4 and get 4 and write something to the effect of x squared plus 9. You know, you just, you just can't simply do that, okay? What you can do, we'll model on the next screen. So here is on the left the same expression we just looked at. Let's do it the right way. What you can do is divide out common factors in both the numerator and denominator. So it's going to help to be able to factor today. Um, if I look at x squared plus 10x plus 16, and I want to write the numerator as a product of two factors, I want to think about something we worked on back in the fall, uh, factoring a quadratic expression. x times x gets me x squared. I'm looking for two numbers that add up to 10 and multiply to 16. Yeah, they're 8 and 2. Both positive. And if I look at the denominator, 2x plus 4, it's just a binomial, but I can factor out a 2. I can factor out the greatest common factor, 2. And what I see is that I have a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. For any value other than when x is negative 2, uh, these factors will be exactly the same number, and they will always divide out. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to write this as just the expression x plus 8 over 2. And I would like to add the caveat that, think about this factor here, the x plus 2. I want to say that x cannot equal that value. I want to say that x cannot equal negative 2. For the reason that in the original expression of x equal negative 2, or even in the factored version, we wouldn't get a value. We'd get 0 over 0. So there's the best answer for our expression is that for any x other than when x is negative 2, this means the same thing as x plus 8 over 2. Let's look at this expression here. Let's see if we can factor to simplify here. You know on top, that reminds me of a difference of 2 squares because 25 is 5 squared. And I recall that the way to factor a difference of 2 squares is to write something to the form of 5 plus n times 5 minus n. And I'll check. Yeah, that'll multiply back out to 25 minus n squared. The denominator, n squared minus 3n minus 10, will get me n times n for n squared. But I'm looking for two numbers that add up to negative 3 and multiply to negative 10. That's negative 5 and positive 2. So we have the thing factored. I don't see any factors that are exactly the same, but I see two factors that are pretty similar. 
In fact, the only difference in these two factors is the sign of both. So let me pull kind of a clever trick here. Let me rewrite that factor on top here, the 5 minus n. Let me factor a negative 1 out of that. Let me write this factor right here as negative 1 times n minus 5. And the value in doing that is that now I have a factor that will divide out of both the numerator and the denominator, the n plus, excuse me, the n minus 5s. And with everything else not factoring out, I can write what I've got. It probably would make sense to multiply this negative 1 into the 5 plus n. Let's write something like negative 5 minus n over n plus 2. Oh yeah, and what value should we say n can't be? Well, n can't be 5. And n can't be negative 2. Okay, time for you to try a couple on your own now. Hit pause. See if you can simplify these expressions. And when you've got some things you'd like to compare to my work, let's uh, hit play and give yourself some feedback. I want to simplify x squared minus 6x minus 27 over 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. And to do it, I'd like to factor both the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is a trinomial to factor x squared minus 6x minus 27. So x and x will form x squared. I think I need two numbers that add up to negative 6 and multiply to negative 27, and I think that's negative 9 and positive 3. Now, the denominator is a little trickier because I'm looking for not x and x, but like 2x and x, a way to make 2x squared. So what I need are the two numbers that would make the middle term 7 and the last term a positive 6. I think the way to do that is to put a 2 here and a 3 here. And I'll check and see that that indeed does work. Yep, 2x squared plus 3x and plus 2x is 4x and make 6 here. And the thing about this one, and I put this example here just to show you that not every rational expression will simplify. There are no common factors here. You can't divide out 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. So this thing here is already simplified. This one, on the other hand, can be simplified some. On top... It's a binomial, but I can factor a 3 out to get something like 6 plus a as the leftover factor. The bottom is a difference of two squares, which can be written as a plus 6 times a minus 6. I guess the thing I would ask here is, are these factors the same? And do you need to pull the negative 1 trick that I showed on the last screen? The answer in this case is you don't. Because with subtraction, the order matters, but with addition, it doesn't. a plus 6 means the exact same thing as 6 plus a. So those are like factors that can divide out and give you a result of something like 3 over a minus 6. Oh yeah, and six can, uh, a cannot be negative 6 because of this factor, and a cannot be positive 6. Thanks for watching.